So let's start with um, lessons from the Swiss uh, referendum. We will first listen to the um, to Enno Schmidt, who just told me that he has worked for 10 years exclusively um, on the Swiss popular initiative on basic income. Woo! So we will his experiences and yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's 10 years now, and I try to say a word about it in seven minutes. Um, it's more than 10 years that we started under Kenny and we by thinking about what would be the best in the moment to do for the people. And we decided the best is that the people are free to do the things they really want to do and that it's necessary to come further on in the development of the world and it's better for the peace. And so we started this initiative. And at first, I would like to say that everything we could do in Switzerland, we thanks to direct democracy. So this instrument was important for me. I'm from Germany, and I went to Switzerland for this initiative and campaign um, because I don't want it to wait um, until in Germany there's also a true and serious democracy. And this instrument, to be able to have an idea from the population, our citizens, and to come with that to a state's affair and to be able to bring it through until a popular vote. That is really a grateful thing. I'm grateful for that and it's a great thing. Um, so that's the first. And the second, what I experienced is that we did a lot. We did such big performances, spectacular things, but at least it is the strength of the idea itself. So that for me it becomes obviously that the thing, the task that I have to follow and to do is to spread the idea as far as I can, to bring in touch with this idea as many people as I can. Everything else is done by the idea itself. And so that was also the goal by the film I did, based income. Uh, cultural impulse, not so much that the people understand the idea of a basic income, but more that the people felt understood by this film and the idea of an unconditional basic income. And maybe that's the point that I would like to set, um, that it becomes for me important that an unconditional basic income is not just one more social program or some something what you have to um, explore and to bring the people in understanding it, but it is much more to strengthen the people in where they are. That is for me the idea of non-conditional basic income and the power and fall of it that inspires the people to understand more that they can think what they think, they can feel what they feel, they are not wrong. So today we are teach that everything is wrong, what we really feel, we really want. And an unconditional basic income say no, you can have your own perception and that and take it serious. You can have your own thinking, take it serious. This is a, the, the top point of this idea for me. So we started it and um, you know Switzerland is not a country well known by its uh, enormous poverty, <clears throat> but, but more for the money that um, that is from other countries and makes poverty there. And that was for me a, a good thing also to start this initiative in a country in which not the need is on the top, the poverty. Because for me it's not to abolish poverty, not to continue an old acting against. It is much more an idea. And Switzerland is more free to think about this and to discuss it as an idea. Also because of the culture of discussion, because of direct democracy that creates more listening, more taking serious what the others are thinking. So and therefore to have it not just as a measure for anything what's existing in the, in the row of uh, 100 years fighting against poverty, but to, to, to have an understanding of an equal right for everybody as a human being, and at least the question what a human being is, in opposite to a robot. We start that, two people, and then others come, came to us, and others said, 
let's start the initiative, the people's initiative. And we did that in 2012. And in 2013, we have collected 126,000 signatures, what is uh, a successful people's initiative. And then the government discussed about that. And the government said, rejected it in a way and said um, to the parliament and to the people in the country, say, vote no about this, this is awful, this disturbs the uh, society. And people from abroad thought, okay, now it's death, but it's not death. So the government has nothing to say in that way. It's just that they say what they think. The so sovereign is the population. And I tell this because for me, there's really a link to strengthen civil society and democracy together with this idea of an unconditional basic income. When it comes closer to the vote, we decided not to discuss details, not financing, but to focus to the main point of the idea. First of all, to come close and understand something of the main point of this idea of an unconditional basic income. So the unconditional and everybody has the right to live. The experience is that if you come too quickly in details, models, the discussion will immediately push into these areas, away from an understanding of an unconditional basic income. If it is to finance, at least, depends on if you will an unconditional basic income. So to start with a point that really, um, let's say, touch, touches your heart or your brain, your spirit, and then go in the implementation and not in the opposite. So otherwise I think you will have a new social benefit system and not the space of human being and that is the unconditional. And that is the spirit of what a right is, an equal right. For me it is in the tradition of the history, it is the same idea, exactly the same, in another time, in other circumstances, like the idea of democracy, like the idea of abolishing slavery, like the idea of human rights, it is the same, and the same challenge to renew and rethink this big uh, results of our grandfathers. 23.1% of the Swiss voters said yes, and the rest said no. And some people think, oh, this is bad. But from, from my experience, it's a very good result in a country where um, there was zero when we started. And it grows up, and not by your opinion poll, you know, it's not a survey, it is responsibility, it's a vote. The people voted into the responsibility that they know they have to pay it. And that result means it's the first step, it is on the table, more than 60% of the population said in the survey after that, it is on the table in every single party, the majority um, is convinced that this is a topic of the next time, and nearly a half of the population think there will be a next vote and it will be introduced. And I think we will go to a next vote, and that is usual in Switzerland, by such a topic, a first vote, a second, or maybe a third. And I think in 20 years we will have it. Well, uh, I think seven years ago, uh, Andre and Philippe and many other people, we met when there was a, a rebel in uh, one of the rebel rethinking Belgium initiatives and, and and I talk about dialogue democracy and there was also an edited volume there where I, I I said why I think that the dialogue democracy could unite multilingual societies like Belgium and Switzerland and all my Belgian colleagues said oh no no in Belgium it would be the end of Belgium and, and I said you know why not can you have a a referendum on basic income, it will not divide the country to Flemish, well, oh yes, 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 it will, it will, everything will divide the country. So, <laughs> so, so this is just an introduction to explain you the, the subtitle of my, of my talk, uh, because yes, here we have an example in Switzerland of, uh, of how uh, people who are not related to any political party, like Enno and uh, other colleagues, could from the bottom, uh, uh, bottom up, raise an initiative, collect signatures, and have 
the whole population uh, uh, voting on that, have the parliament and government uh, uh, be obliged to confront themselves with this proposal. So here are the results, a little bit more in detail. Uh, the turnout was 46%, which is actually average in Switzerland. It's of course low, but it's an average for, for, for um, popular initiatives and referendums. And here you see uh, some select the results in selected cantons. So actually, in in, in a number in in four cantons, there was a majority above 30 percent. So 36 percent in Basel city, where Enno lives. Perhaps this also explains. But also Geneva, uh, 35 percent, etc. Uh, of course, then other cantons like Appenzell Wienerrodden, uh, a beautiful canton with like 15,000 inhabitants, uh, only 12 percent. Uh, supported the uh, initiative. Even more interesting is the vote in the cities. So here you sell, have selected cities uh, demonstrating that in most cities, with the exception of Lugano, uh, the main city in, in the Italian-speaking canton of Ticino, where the percentage was close to the one in the whole canton, but in all other cities like Lucerne, Zurich, Basel, etc., the percentage was much higher than in, in the respective canton. So for instance, uh, in the canton of Lucerne, only 18% said yes, but in the city of Lucerne, it was 29%. And you had uh, 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 percentages over 40% or 40% in Bern, in Geneva, 42%, and in some central districts of Zurich, you even had a majority of uh, 54%. These central districts are typically uh, districts where in Zurich, you, the extreme left is very strong. Uh, there is also a correlation between uh, the vote for the leftist party, like Social Democratic Party, and uh, and the percentage of yes votes. So in, in cantons where Social Democrats are stronger, you did have a, a more positive um, uh, percent, um, more yes votes. So you have on the um, uh, y-axis is, is the percentage of uh, people who voted yes, and also it seemed that. In, in, in the municipalities where a lot of people, uh, relatively a lot of people, uh, benefit from social um, uh, social aid, uh, that the percentage also uh, is, was higher uh, of those who uh, supported the um, basic income. Uh, but I will now say something about the uh, results of uh, the so-called Vox analysis. That's uh, something that in Switzerland we always have after. Uh, popular votes where uh, uh, it's a post-electoral survey which is done two weeks within two weeks after actually the vote and uh, and it's quite reliable with regard to um, the margin of error is relatively low so it's really professionally done and I will present some uh, results of this Vox analysis. You see here that uh, among the supporters of Green Party uh, there was a majority who voted in favor of the initiative, 56%. Uh, Social Democrats were a bit less, uh, 39. It should be said here that of the national party, the Social Democrats at the Swiss level, they recommended to vote no, uh, mostly because uh, trade unions are, were against and uh, trade unions are quite important in Socialist Party. But many cantonal sections of the Social Democratic Party, including the, in my canton, Ticino, recommended to vote yes, so, you, you, so, so that it was not a unanimous, um, uh, from, you, it was not a unanimous re re rejection by Social Democrats. And then you, you have the results of uh, um, voters from other parties, Christian Democrats, Swiss People's Party is the main Swiss party, on, on, on the very right of the spectrum, uh, and you also have the results uh, with regard to the uh, ideological position of voters uh, from extreme left, uh, almost almost half of them were in favor, to the extreme right, which was um, against. Uh, with regard to language groups, as you can see, uh, the initiative did not split the country into uh, the German and Italian speakers uh, had the same percentage of 22%. French speakers a uh, bit higher, 27. Uh, it should be said that uh, Philippe uh, was very present in the French speaking <laughs> media. Uh, if, if he participated a bit more in Italian and German speaking Switzerland with interviews, perhaps 
the results uh, might have been different. Um, a, a bit disappointing from my point of view is the uh, is the young generation. So under 30, they were not so so it's, it's average as national about 22 percent is close to the national, uh, but they were not so much enthusiastic apparently. Uh, the older, I mean the my generation and uh, going on until uh, 59 were more supportive, 28 percent, and then of course the uh, over 70, uh, as we would expect, were, were the least um, supportive of basic income. Um, I already said some about the urban, suburb, and rural divide, uh, which is also confirmed by this uh, post uh, vote analysis survey. Uh, there, there were also not huge differences with regard, with regard to people's income, so it's not that, uh, as you see, the, 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 the People who are less well off in, in Switzerland, earning less than 5,000 francs per household, uh, did not support it uh, more than the others. But the interesting data is here on profession, where you see that independent, so people who are not employed, but they, you know, they have, you know, you know who the independents are, so they were very much supportive, 36% were in, in favor, so much more than people employed in private sector, public sector, and in agriculture, although the result for agriculture is, is not statistically significant in this case. Okay, so a few words about the motivation to vote yes. So, so those among the respondents who voted yes, what was their main reason? And the main reason was that simply it was a good idea. It should be discussed. Yes. Uh, that's the main reason of those who voted yes. Uh, almost a one third of them said that it's simply a good idea. Then also you have other reasons, social justice, freedom, uh, the question of technological progress and there will be less jobs in the future, but they were, as you see, not the dominant uh, among the supporters. And now, um, uh, no, I'm at minute, ah, yeah, minute seven, okay, uh, I'm, I'm finishing. Uh, and the main motivation to vote no is we cannot finance it uh, and it, 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 there will be no incentives to work. So, you know, typical argument that you can expect. So I'm finishing just to saying that the uh, people who launched the initiatives were extremely creative. Uh, they, they, they were able to, with, with relatively little amount of money, uh, to, to, to raise the media attention. So this was the day uh, when, uh, you can't see this? Uh, when, when, when they presented the, the, the signature in front of, to the, to the Swiss parliament. So this was in front of the parliament they had this big truck with 8 million, apparently exactly 8 million uh, coins of 5 cents because uh, the population of Switzerland is 8 million, so everybody has uh, uh, the same share. So it had a huge media impact. Um, <laughs> this is my, my one year old son. <laughs> uh, he's taking more than a share. He's taking more than a yeah, well, Still has to learn a lot, but we gave we gave back everything, uh, everything uh, afterwards. And let me just conclude. So, uh, with with one small anecdote, I uh, unfortunately I, I was not I was in, in the U.S. during the referendum, so I participated from the distance. Uh, but one thing that struck me is, is uh, the, the the Monday after the referendum, so on, on 6th of June, I went to uh, to to the kindergarten in. in in Princeton, where we were living, and the, um, the the teacher of my of my children, she's an immigrant from India, and she told me, "Oh, I saw that uh, you won that re referendum on this idea that everybody should have the same thing, and that's great." And I said, "Well, no, we didn't win. We actually no, no, but I, I saw people cutting the cake, uh, and and I think this is for me what was basically the, the the most interesting lesson is that something that happened in Switzerland had a impact at the global level that we can not even you know imagine or measure but i'm sure that the publicity that it it, it had uh, is, is is basically i think the most important thing that happened that people all around the world uh, got to know uh, what actually basic income is thank you i was also in switzerland and i Mark, that there was much discussion about this uh, amount that was being mentioned, I think 2,300 Swiss francs, which is about 2,200 euros. So all the, 
opposition could simply say this is not feasible to finance, would it, looking back, not have been better to say a basic income pitched at, let's say, 30% of GDP per capita? Because that's always feasible. 30% GDP per capita is always 30%. And now they could very easily say it's well, too expensive. Let me re repeat the question. Did you hear the question at the back? No. So repeat. The question is worldwide. That everybody in the whole entire world said that is such a high amount 2,500 francs for each adult and for children 625. Of course, you lose <laughs> the book. So the story is um, we didn't mention or fix any amount. So we did it not because we know if there is one number, the people will jump on it and they will discuss a number and not an unconditional basic income. In a book of two of our ma major colleagues, um, Danish Taub and Christian Müller, they wrote, for example, it could be 2,500 uh, 2, francs, and then they make a calculation. And from this moment on, in the media, this amount was called. And the misunderstanding around the world that the people take the currency exchange and think this does matter anything. So the currency exchange is without any meaning. 2,500 francs is barely enough to live as an adult. It is very low, very, very low. And for the Swiss people, it's more the argument, so your proposal for 2,500 francs is so deep, that's not enough that the population will become poor, everybody is... Uh, so the point is 2,500 francs is in the buy power, the purchasing power, around 1,200 euro. And that's really not enough for an adult in my age, it's enough for students, for example. And we decided, or they decided to call this number, because if you added two people, 5,000 francs, that sounds high, and then the children. But if you go higher, what is necessary for a single person, it becomes too high in the imagination of a family with four children. And lower is absolutely a no-go because it's not enough to live. And what, what, what shall we want with an unconditional basic income? There's a big misunderstanding and about the, the high because nobody wants to know how expensive life is in Switzerland. And as I said, the argument, often the arguments on the streets and by the media also and the politicians is, um, this is an awful proposal because of such a low amount. Okay, uh, can I add something to that question? So the fact that the second question already was about the numbers and high or low and feasible or not, doesn't that contradict uh, your position, which struck me that you said, not about the details. We don't want to discuss about the details. I immediately thought about the feasibility is, of course, not yes. the detail. So does this, this not contradict this position that uh, you cannot keep that position? You always have to discuss yes. About, yes. about the feasibility. Yes, that's, that's the difficulty. That we have to um, call a number and, of course, we have a range of details, but not in our main arguments. So it was difficult first when you talk about GDP. So who knows what GDP is? Uh, few one think they know and don't know, and many really don't know that they don't. Um, we tried to give very simple, easy, clear statements because we learned that for a discussion in the entire population, and that's unimaginable an entire population, it never had been a discussion in the whole entire population, and never was a goal of a public vote, so that is the first time in history that the whole population, and I can say you, it's not like a discussion in the academic, or on the left wing, or in that party, it is really another thing, and we try to give very um, understandable, clear, but provocative statements, and in the background, a lot of information about details, but also it was not that we, um, so in our group, there are different views. Some people want to have um, 
just a, a text for the rich. Or, like Philip said, Oswald Sieg um, argued for um, super uh, Tobin tax or microfinance um, tax, transition tax. And so my favorite, of course, is uh, consumption tax. And so that was different. And we have had these differences in our group. It was not just one organization, one group, one meaning. It was very um, different. And also we act different. The Zurich group, the group in the western part of Switzerland, so in, in, in Tessin, Ticino, there was a group. And for me, that was good to have it in this, um, in this way that we don't start to have one voice, one level, an organization, but we focused to the authentic of the people, even if it is different. Okay.